Key performance indicators, do you love them or hate them? On the one hand, they're the cornerstone of analytics. Simple values with a complex background that communicate essential information. But most of them are terrible. They look at the wrong data, they're easily manipulated, or they just look at something completely useless. So let's take a look at how we can do them better and turn KPIs from a buzzword into something meaningful. A KPI is a measurable that demonstrates how a company or department is doing towards a strategic goal. KPIs can measure a high-level goal like a company becoming profitable, or a low-level goal like a team's product delivery, or anywhere in between. A metric is a measure of everyday business events that gives a complete picture of what's going on, but they don't necessarily represent progress towards a goal. KPIs are derived from these overall metrics to target key data that represents progress. KPIs should help teams focus on what's important, separating the signal from the noise. KPIs on their own won't do much. It's important to set reasonable targets around them and track progress over time. You don't just want a fancy gauge that flips back and forth and then is forgotten. Some KPIs are leading indicators that are precursors for future success, and others are lagging indicators which show results from the past. Some common types of KPIs include process, which measures measures the efficiency of a specific process, inputs, which measure the attributes of resources put into a process, outputs, which measure whatever is produced by the process, outcomes, which focus on the impact of a process or project, and project, which measures the status and delivery of a project or initiative. For example, we have a project to build and deliver a dashboard. Our project KPI will measure how far along the dashboard is to completion, our process KPI will measure how many development items are completed per week as the dashboard is built. Our input KPI will measure the quality of data in the sources. Our output KPI will measure the quality of data in the dashboard. And our outcomes KPI will measure the feedback from the users of the dashboard. You probably won't always need all of them, but those are just some examples of each. The problem with KPIs is people don't spend the time to develop good ones. They just take a ton of metrics, cram them all into a dashboard, and don't consider their overall value. KPIs are just a form of communication, and a good one will clearly and concisely tell a user what's going on in a way that they'll understand. Applying industry standard KPIs may not always work. They should be tailored for a specific company, department, team, and user. KPIs can often have a negative connotation because they aren't well thought out and they don't show a complete picture or they're unfairly tied to compensation and performance, so employees just manipulate them. All metrics can be abused. They should be telling a story of what's happening and not weaponized to force people to do certain things. For example, a manager of a support team has a KPI of ticket throughput. The number is low, so they use that to justify more staff, more resources, or consider process changes to try and raise it. They don't threaten the support team with poor reviews unless the number raises. In that case, they'll just start marking tickets complete and the KPI becomes useless. That's just bad leadership. Because of this, there's a number of rebranding attempts like OKRs, KRAs, SMART goals, and so on. But ultimately, they're the same thing, key metrics that show progress towards a goal. And they've always been essential for leaders. You can go all the way back to Roman records and see reports to Caesar that are essentially KPIs that show things like legion battle readiness and stuff like that. So let's look at the process of defining a KPI. First is understanding the strategic goal. What's the desired outcome and why does it matter? Based on all the business metrics available, how can progress towards the goal be measured? And what can influence the outcome? You can't just say, we want 50% more sales, and then sit back and hope it happens. And then you want to establish who's responsible for monitoring and trying different things to see how it affects progress. From there, a KPI should be smart, specific. The KPI can't just say, do better. It needs to be a specific goal. Measurable. It needs to be a concrete value, a number or percentage. Attainable. Don't be like Wells Fargo and just tell employees to open a number of accounts many times higher than the industry highest. Be reasonable and don't force your employees to have to cheat or risk losing their jobs. Relevant. There's a lot of KPIs that sound impressive but don't point towards useful goals. Time. There should be a clear timeline for achieving a goal or for ongoing projects, a frequency for reviewing it. Otherwise, it becomes a number that somebody looks at and maybe reports at a quarterly meeting but nobody really takes any action on. From there, the KPI should be iterated on. Businesses are constantly changing, so the measurements we use to evaluate them should as well. So let's walk through an example. We're going to use YouTube metrics because YouTube provides a ton of them and they're kind of fascinating. So we'll start with our strategic goal. We want to grow and expand our channel's reach. Looking at our variety of metrics, some people focus on subscriber count, which is nice, but that really just means people clicked a button once. They may or may not ever return to the channel. Views is a good indicator of channel health, but it's not always reliable. 
A great clickbait thumbnail may get a lot of views, but then people close the video as soon as they realize it's clickbait. Not exactly a good indication of growth. Likes are always helpful, which I'm just throwing out as a hint. And click-through rate is also nice, but again, getting clicks on videos is only half the battle. You want to reach the right people who the content appeals to. So we'll use watch time as our KPI. It best represents people who clicked on the video and enjoyed it enough to watch, which is the type of viewer we're trying to reach. So we have a specific KPI. It's also measurable, thanks YouTube for handling that for us. As established, it's the most relevant metric to get healthy growth. Now I haven't done it yet, but if I wanted a serious goal, I would plan out a reasonable growth rate. I should review the current watch time and then set an attainable goal based on that. And we should establish a timeline to review it, like every month. So let's say we currently have 100 watch hours per month and we have an attainable goal of 10% growth per month. We can do a monthly check to see if it's on track and we can do experiments to see what affects watch time in a positive direction. So now that we have a defined KPI, it might take a few passes to get it right. You might find it's best to use a few different metrics and build a single KPI that represents all of them, but you get the idea. So there's a number of common mistakes that come with making KPIs. You don't want metrics that are easy to manipulate. Malicious or not, people will often do things that make metrics look good. Tying it to performance and compensation is even worse. If you pay programmers based on lines of code, they'll just write longer code to do the same thing. And long code doesn't represent value. While you want to be specific, you don't want to be too narrow in scope. I think we've all seen projects where too much attention was on marketing and they forgot to make sure the product was good. Another mistake is not having a mix of lagging and leading indicators. If you only have lagging, you'll have a good picture of what the past is, but no idea of what's about to happen. And if you only have leading indicators, it's hard to ensure those are accurate in their prediction without the historical data. Some examples of common bad KPIs are gross revenue instead of net profit. Businesses love to talk about revenue to look good, but they may not be making any profit after factoring the cost of generating that revenue. Another is total visits to a store. While it's nice to have traffic, ultimately, if they don't buy anything, it doesn't really do much good. This is popular with websites where visits are tracked, but it's not tied to any real value. And my favorite is tying job performance to attendance. Most of us have worked at places that love to associate people in an office for long hours with productivity. But as most have learned over the last year, it doesn't really have any correlation to work that's getting done. And there are far better ways to measure performance than hours spent in an office. So that's the basic of KPIs, but let's take ours to the next level. To do that, we need to make sure we're balancing lagging and leading indicators. To get really awesome leading or predictive indicators, we can bring in analytics like machine learning or statistical models to best predict the trends. You also want to make sure KPIs get assigned to the best people who understand what they mean and are curious enough to experiment with them to see if they can affect the performance of the KPI. If you can get a good team of people who understand data to manage the KPIs, you'll see they have a lot more value. And from there, iterate frequently. Keep them up to date with market and organizational changes. KPIs are the basics of good analytics and telling good data stories. And for more on using data to tell stories, you'll want to check out this video next.